Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast NFL Edition. We are here at the NFC AFC Championship Week, and we have Justin Ackendell with us here today. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, brother. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Man, this is the last uh, weekend, really, before the Super Bowl. Yes, yeah, the last weekend we play in NFL football for the Super Bowl. That, that is that is crazy. So we're definitely going to be going over the NFC Championship game and the AFC Championship game. But before we do that, we want to talk about some NFL news that's recently come out. Phillip Rivers actually just retired this week after 17 seasons. He was the fourth overall pick in the 2004 NFL Draft. And he became the full-time starter in 2006 of the then San Diego Chargers after Drew Brees left. Justin, man, if you just want to talk a little bit about Phillip Rivers, his stats, and his lasting legacy, if he's Hall of Fame worthy, and so on. Yeah, Phillip Rivers was definitely a competitor. He came in 2006, and... He hasn't missed a start since. He's top five all-time in completions, top five all-time in passing yards, top five all-time in passing touchdowns. He's second all-time in consecutive QB QB starts, second to Brett Favre, of course. And he has better career numbers than the two quarterbacks he's going to be compared to in his class, Big Ben and Eli Manning. So I think he's done enough to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, he never won the big game, but... You know, when you think of Phillip Rivers, you just think of a competitor. I mean, he was a legendary trash talker, even though he didn't cuss. He was just, you know, a good, a good guy, a good, a good quarterback for a long, a very long time. And I think that he put up the numbers that you need to get into the Hall of Fame. With that draft class that you just talked about with him, Eli and Ben Roethlisberger, those three, does that make that one of the best, if not the best quarterback draft class of all time? Because all three of them are going to get in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I think the I think the um, the best QB class is that 1983 draft that they always rave about with like Dan Marino and John Elway and all those guys. But mm-hmm. I'll have to look in to see who has the best QB class. 2018 is a pretty good class if you ask me. You know, got Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, yeah. Josh Allen. So five five years from now, we might be talking about 2018's class because we just talked about. Those three, and I mean, even from the big game perspective, Eli has two Super Bowls, Ben has two. You just listed all Philip Rivers' things. So I'm just trying to think, like, comparing them to other classes, they have to be near the top with the quarterback thing. But it's good for him. I think it was time. I think that last game, he was just like, yeah, this is going to be it. And now for the Colts, uh, they had the second most cap space in the league. So where do they? go from here because they were a playoff team so they're not going to have a too too high draft pick so where do they go yeah i believe they draft in the 20s so they don't have they don't have a draft pick per se that you're going to draft a quarterback you're not in a spot in the draft where you're going to draft a quarterback if i were them i would be trying to leverage some picks and try to trade for Deshaun Watson. i know they're in the same division as the texans so it probably won't happen but i'll definitely take a shot at it they have nothing to lose really would that with the colts too would they also consider trading up in the draft to maybe go get a quarterback. Yeah, they're definitely a candidate to trade it up in, up in the draft. You know, we got some good guys at the top of the draft. Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence won't be there. But there's, a, mm-hmm. there's, also, there's teams ahead of them who need quarterbacks too. So I don't know if they're going to be able to pull that off. And I know now with Phillip retiring, we talked about this when we thought the Jets were going to have the number one pick that that could be a potential landing spot for, like, let's say a Sam Darnold, wouldn't you think, if the Jets went quarterback? Yeah, it could definitely be a spot for Sam Sam Darnold, but like I said, if I was the Jets, I'd probably stick to Sam Darnold and probably trade, probably trade that number two pick and try to get more picks, honestly. That team needs a lot, so I would trade down with all of them. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see, man. And then, you know, always a quarterback. Got to throw it out there. There is Kaepernick. (laughs) (laughs) He's been banned from the NFL, dog. He's not coming back. You just still got to throw it out there. It's just, it's the cultural right thing to do to just throw his name out there. Shoot, earlier today, I thought this guy was about to get Josh Rosen. Dwayne Haskins signed a one-year deal with Pittsburgh. 
Yeah, Dwayne has to sign a one year deal with Pittsburgh. I think I guess they think that um they can get him back on track. I hope so for his sake. I mean, that's a pretty good team. They have a good off they have a good offense, good weapon, so Yeah, well we'll see. Big Another... Ben Big Ben's looking pretty washed right now. I don't know what they're gonna do yeah. do with him, so he might have he might have a shot to start or at least compete. Yeah, if Ben if Ben Roethlisberger does retire this year as well, that would be the last one in that draft class since Eli's already retired. Then you have a quarterback battle between Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins during the summer, and that would be very interesting. Yeah. After you just said those two names, they need to trade up the quarterback. Too. <laughs> that was... Dwayne Haskins and Mason Rudolph ain't doing it for you? I mean, I watched Mason Rudolph start for the Steelers, and he wasn't very good, and I watched Dwayne has to start for the Washington football team, and he was not very good. So I've seen them play, and I know you're not going to get too much out of them. But Dwayne Haskins is younger, so and he does have good talent. So they might be able to coach him up. But if I had to guess, I don't think he. I don't think they will be able to coach him up. He'll be a backup for him. Yeah. Well, hopefully he takes a second chance serious. He's in the gym every day. He's in the lab going over playbooks and films because he was not doing that at Washington. So hopefully he matures and knows that if he messes this up, he's probably done, done. No, he will be done if he messes up this opportunity. That's for sure. We're going to have to see. We're going to have to see. Uh, Other news, the Detroit Lions uh, hired a new coach, the former Saints TE coach, Dan Campbell, to a six-year deal. Justin, who is Dan Campbell? So Dan Campbell has a little bit of head coaching experience. He was the interim coach for the Dolphins in 2015. He went five and seven. The man's never been a coordinator in the NFL. He's more he's like that rah rah like Molly Bear type of coach. Kind of if you played sports, he's he's basically a strength coach as your head coach. So he's not really an X and O's type of guy, not an offensive X and O's guy, not a defensive X and O's guy, not even special teams coach. He is a He's a motivator as their head coach. And I'm just a little side-eyed at that decision. At the introductory press conference today, he he cut a WWE promo saying that we're going to be the last the last team standing after a, a war on the football field type of thing. So I don't know. He's, he's a little zany, zany for me. I just don't see that working out in Detroit. Yeah, you said strength coach. I mean, strength coach is all power to him. They get the team ready to go, but is he really ready to be? Because once you're a head coach in the NFL, you're not just even access and oh, you're a CEO of an organization, basically. Is he going to be able to do those executive type duties? The Lions certainly think he can. I'm not really sure about it. this. Just screams like Freddie Kitchen vibes in Cleveland, Cleveland last year. And I just, after watching, after watching him, I'm just out on anyone who hasn't been a head coach. Or at least a coordinator, coaching head coaching the NFL team. Yeah. Well, if it's Freddie Kitchens vibes, then we'll be right back here next year talking about the next Detroit head coach. And you also, with uh, Stafford and Kenny Galladay, anyone good on the lines asking for a trade. That's another quarterback that I've seen get a lot of press about who people should trade for because he's in his young 30s. So, what do you think about like a Matt Stafford going to? Indianapolis or Matt Stafford going to New England or or uh, Denver. What do you think of those type of teams? I think I think Matt Stafford and any of those places that you name is a is a great move for those teams because you got you got to understand the Lions are a shit organization. They are they are just not good and they have Mm -hmm. failed Matt Stafford. They failed Calvin Johnson back in the day. They failed Barry Sanders back in the day. So they have a they have a history of pissing off their star players and just not doing what you need for them to do to win. So if I'm any of those good players, I know King Galladay, a free agent. I don't see him re-signing with the Lions. Matt Stafford's still under contract. They're they're not the Lions aren't sure what they're going to do with him. If I'm Matt Stafford, I'll ask him to trade me or whatever because I don't think I would want to be in Detroit if I was playing right now. Another thing about terrible organizations, which we've we've hit on, is the Deshaun Watson stuff. But now you have execs talking about it. It's going to take at least, at least three first round picks and then some to get Deshaun Watson. Is Deshaun, that's 
So you're probably looking at maybe six to eight picks. Is Deshaun Watson worth six to eight picks? Because that's your future. So if you don't win in his prime, you're not winning for like the next 10 years. Six, where'd you get the six to eight picks? The three picks, the three first rounds is a minimum. And then they said, and then some. So I'm assuming they want more picks. That's what the execs are saying. So if you do three first rounds and then three second rounds, that's six picks. I think if you're a good team, you know, like a 49ers, a Colts, Mm -hmm. a Pate, not the Patriots are often good enough. They won't do that. Yeah, but like, you know, a Colts or a 49ers or maybe even a Denver, maybe I would do that. I would trade three first rounders for him. And I think I think three first round picks should be enough. I mean, Jalen Ramsey got traded for a first round pick. DeAndre Hopkins wasn't even traded for a first round pick. So, yeah, I think three first round pick. First round pick is number. You got. You got to understand. This is the top five franchise quarterback. Mm-hmm. Wherever you, wherever you're drafting in the draft, ne- necessarily might not be a good player. He might bust. Like there's still that unknown. And with Deshaun Watson, we know how good he is. We saw him on this shit team this year. Put up, put up great numbers. So I think he's worth all the picks and all the money. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you name those teams. Do you actually see any of them actually biting on that? Because the Patriots are out. There's no way they would do that. I don't think the Texans are going to trade in division to the Colts. So no, not the Colts. 49ers, so, 49ers man, they got they got a pretty good squad. They got a pretty good young squad too. So I don't think they will miss the first round picks too much if they do trade for him. So they would probably be three first round picks and Garoppolo. Maybe maybe three first round picks, Garoppolo, or three first round picks and someone on defense or a running back or something. So what if they ask for Bosa? Do you do it? No. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trading my pass rush. I'm not trading my franchise pass rush. That's another cornerstone of the team. You can't have Bosa. No. Okay. Hopefully the 49ers feel three the same. Three first right, rounders cause... and Bosa. Nah. Uh, that because Bosa first round. If you want to trade for Nick Bosa, that's a first round pick too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so nah. mm-hmm. we'll see. But let's get into these games, man. We got two games. We got the NFC and the AFC. Uh, before we get into those, you were four and zero last week, right? What picking? Mm-hmm. You didn't get a pick wrong last week, right? Yeah, straight picking games. Yeah, I was four and zero. I called this championship weekend. Yeah, okay. Well, we have the number one seed Green Bay Packers going up against my favorite team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, last time they played, the Buccaneers destroyed them 38 to 10. That's when the Super Bowl hype was starting to build for Buffalo. Packers beat the Rams in a 32 18 game, and Bucks beat the Saints in a 30 to 20 game, thanks to. Four Saint turnovers and three picks by Drew Brees. Justin, this is another matchup we didn't think we'd ever see. We saw Drew Brees versus Tom Brady in the playoffs. Now we have Tom Brady versus Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs. A lot of people are trying to say this is what the closest thing we could have gotten to a LeBron versus Kobe type NBA Finals things because of the two people. What are you thinking when you're seeing this game? What the matchups, coaching, um, as Green Bay? So weather's a factor. What are you seeing in this type of matchup? Yeah, I wanted to talk about kind of the how both teams kind of got here in the games okay. last week. Yeah, the Bucks defense feasted on four ton- turnovers for the Saints. They knew that Drew Brees couldn't throw the ball deep. The halftime adjust, the halftime adjustment for him was really just playing the Saints receivers up close. So um, Drew Brees couldn't complete any passes because they knew Drew Brees couldn't throw the ball deep. I mean, in the second quarter, they had the bringing Jameis Winston to throw a deep pass on a trick play. So I think they probably should have stuck with him. And the Saints could have, the Saints could have won that game too. But mm-hmm. Jared Cook fumbled in the third quarter while they were up, and that was just that was it. Yeah, that, that was, was that was just the end of that one. So yeah, the Bucks the Bucks were trying to run the ball in that were running the ball in that game, and they're just playing. Honestly, the defense was the story in that game. Devin yes. Devin White was just 
absolutely everywhere. He was all over the field. And that's probably the only way that they can beat the Green Bay Packers. I mean, they're going to beat them last time. Yeah, they defense. Yeah, they got they sack they sack Aaron Rodgers four times. They picked them off two they picked them off twice in the first quarter, but that was one of Aaron Rodgers' worst games ever. So I definitely don't see see the Packers playing that bad again. Devontae Adams was it was his first game off injury that first game. So he only had six catches for sixty one yards. So I think he's gonna play a bigger factor in this game. Packers defense is a little suspect, but they were able to get pressure on they were able to get pressures on pressure on the Rams last week. So I think they'll be able to get pressure on Tom Brady. And I just honestly don't see the Bucks walking into Green Bay on that cold Lambeau field and coming out with the win. I will say with the I'm concerned with the Bucks defense, even though that's crazy to say after just what happened in the soup uh this game against the Saints. But the last time, because Michael Thomas was hurt. He was banged up. He wasn't saying Michael Thomas. The last time I saw the Bucks against a healthy top tier receiver was against Kansas City. And we know what happened to them there. And I think Devontae Adams, between him and Stephon Diggs, are the two best receivers in the league. So what do you see their cornerbacks doing going against him? Are they going to double team him? Are they going to play that trash zone that they did on Tyreek Hill that he lit them up for? What do you think they're going to do? I think they're probably going to man up on Devontae Adams and Probably try to blitz Aaron Rod. Uh, probably try to blitz him and get pressure on him. That's how I see because the Ram the Rams were trying to man up on Devontae Adams last week, and then that that play where Devontae Adams scored a touchdown where he's going in motion, Jillian Ramsey gets caught, and the guy doesn't switch over. So I don't know what they're going to do to try to contain Devontae Adams. Tampa Bay's run defense is number one in the league, so I, I don't see Green Bay running up and down on them running up and down on the um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I think I think it's going to be a blitzing, type, a blitzing type of game for Tampa Bay. They're going to try to get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, and hopefully Aaron Rodgers doesn't have enough time to get to Devontae Adams. And then on the flip side of that, just flipping the offense and defense, which Tampa Bay offense do you think is going to show up? Because the offense last week wasn't even that good. So is it going to be the explosive Tampa Bay offense that people are like, oh, this is the team that could win the Super Bowl, or is it going to be the terrible Tampa Bay offense, the 38-3 to against the Saints, even this past game? Because if Drew Brees doesn't have uh, three picks and the fumble, the Saints win that game. So what offense do you think is going to show up, and is Green Bay's defense going to allow for more opportunities for Tampa to score? Green Bay's rushing defense is a little shaky, so I think we're going, I think we're going to see a a run heavy focus, at least on first down, they're going to come out and try to run the, run the ball on them. Ronald Jones was healthy last week. And every time he was in the game, you could just tell that he was a significantly better player than Leonard Fournette. So I think, I think that's what we're going to get. A B is a game time decision. So we don't know if he's going to play, but we still have Mike Evans. We still have Chris Godwin. Tom Brady was getting the tight ends involved last week. So I think, I don't think we're going to get one of those, 38, 38 to three games from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think they're going to be able to put some points on them, but I just think the Packers are going to outscore them. And then also with this game, too, you're obviously looking at Brady's and Rodgers. Tom Brady obviously could have retired like three years ago. He has absolutely nothing to prove. If he goes to the Super Bowl, that would be his 10th Super Bowl appearance, which is absolutely wild. So he has nothing to prove. Aaron Rodgers on the flip side, I feel like they have to win this game. We were just, It's been a whole decade since he's been to a Super Bowl. And he's only been to one. He won one. So I feel like he really needs to get back there. And we'll talk about if they do win, what another Super Bowl would mean for Aaron. But I feel like the pressure is really on Green Bay because you brought it up a couple weeks ago when we were talking about what it would mean for Green Bay to have the number one seed in the NFC and green Bay has been to four out of the last seven NFC championship games. And they've lost all of them. All of them have been on the road, but they've lost all of them. So this one they're at home. So how much pressure is green Bay that green Bay have to really get this done? I don't think they're feeling any pressure at all. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, all those games, all those games were on the road. 
this is a this is an entirely di- different animal. And the last time we saw an NFC Championship game at, at Lambeau Field, it was in 2007 when the Giants went to the Super Bowl. So they mm-hmm. haven't been they haven't been there in 13 years. So I think they're going to be pumped up to play. I don't think they're going to be feeling too much pressure in in, in that in that moment because I think that the Packers think they're the better team. They're at home. They're not coming up from Florida trying to play in 12 degrees in Green Bay. So I don't think there's really any pressure on them, honestly. At least there's probably pressure from us talking about them, but I don't yeah. think that team is feeling any pressure going into this game. The Bucks whooped their ass in week six, so I think they're going to be motivated to at least avenge that loss. So, no, nah, I don't think they're feeling any pressure right now. I will say with the Bucks, at least they have a quarterback who basically lived in this type of weather for the past 20 years. Yeah, but the rest of the team is not used yeah, to it. Yeah, the yes. rest of the team ain't used to that. Bray and Grot used to it. I don't know. I don't know about Mike Evans or Ronald Jones or even Devin White. Shit. I don't know. I don't know how they're gonna deal with that cold. I, I don't think it's that gonna be that big a factor. What we gotta look at is see how Tampa Bay comes out at the beginning of the game. Green yes. Bay is a fast starting team. If mm-hmm. Green Bay is, you know, first try score a touchdown. Tim Bago three and now, and then they score again. It's a 14 0 game. That's when we need to start getting worried because that is a fast starting team. And Tampa Bay typically takes a while to get going. So look, just watch out for that. Well, uh, you have the Packers are uh, I guess three and a half favorite. Who do you got winning this game? Who's going to the Super Bowl? I got the Packers. Same. same. So we both just picked against Tom Brady. So we're going to, so the Tampa's going to win. So. <laughs> but I, I just don't see a way that the I don't, I don't Tampa know. Bay can win. I don't win. know about that one. I, I don't know. The other game, the other game's a real toss up. This game, I, I think the Packers handled this pretty nice. I mean, <laughs> what I saw last week was just, it, it was just incredible. I mean, the Rams did play a lot better than I expected them to play. I mean, they they were in that game for a while. I mean, Jared Goff didn't play too terrible. He was dinking and dunking the whole, the whole game, but they didn't play too terrible. Not having Cooper Cup hurt. Yeah, not having Cooper Cup is definitely a big blow to them. But, yeah, the Rams showed the play. I think if they had a healthy Aaron Donald that could have got pressure on Aaron Rodgers, that would have been a different That would have been a different looking game because Aaron Donald clearly wasn't right. The Rams were just – they were just in a body bag that game. They were just dragging in there. Everyone was hurt. The other – going over to the AFC, that championship game, is the Bills versus the Chiefs. Um, everyone expected the Chiefs to get here, but it was not as easy as people thought. Justin, can you break down how both these teams got there? Let's start off with the defending Super Bowl champs, the Chiefs. Yeah, that game last week against the Browns. So watching that game, Kansas City's first two drives, they scored a touchdown. They was scored on the first three drives. They was scored a touchdown on the first three drives. They didn't get a holding penalty. So they just they just came out from that month of December just looking totally flat and just came out against the Browns. No rust, no nothing. It was just guns a blazing. So it's the se- it's the second quarter towards the towards the towards the end, two minute drill. Browns are driving. And Baker throws the throws the ball right side. Rashard Higgins catching the ball. He's running toward he's running towards the end zone. Fumbles the ball out of the fumbles the ball out the end zone. Touchback Chiefs. Chiefs go on and get a field goal. So it's 19 and 3 going to halftime. Cleveland scores and then and then Patrick Mahomes gets knocked out with a concussion. It's knocked out of the game. So if you're Cleveland, you're thinking, oh, we're going to get in, we're, we're going to win this game. We might be able to come back. And then and then Cleveland scores to get back. Game's 22-27. Chiefs have Chiefs have the ball and they're and they're driving. Browns have no timeouts left. They're at they're at about midfield, fourth and one. Play clock's running down. Everyone thinks that the Chiefs are just going to snap the ball. Uh uh-uh. uh. They run a play with Chad Henney as their backup quarterback to Tyreek Hill for the for the first down. Get the first down. Ends the game. And that's how we got here with the Chiefs. And then the Buffalo Bills. That was more of a a defensive matchup and then the turning point in that game came at the end of the third quarter Ravens had the ball in the red zone it was it was third down third and goal at the nine and Lamar Jackson throws a pick six the Tyron the Tyron Johnson 101 yards for the touchdown then that was the end of that game that's how we ended up getting to the point for the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs 
First with the Chiefs and Browns, typically in the playoffs, we've had a pattern of terrible calls, not going to say costly, but hugely affecting the game. Uh, The biggest one in recent memory was the pass interference with the Rams and Saints. So with the Higgins fumble touchback thing, is that something that the league is going to review in the summer? Like that rule? I haven't seen that play happen in such a high profile moment. Normally Mm -hmm. you see that in like regular season games, occasional Sunday night game, Sunday night big game. You see that. Mm-hmm. It might it might be something. The Chiefs will have lost that way. They might have would have looked at it, but since it was the Browns, I don't think we're going to see a rule change in that regard. But yeah, I mean, Rashard Higgins could have, he could have just ran out of bounds instead of trying to reach over for the ball, and the Browns could have ran some more clock out, ran some more clock out, so the so the Chiefs couldn't get that field goal to end the first first half. But yeah, it, it's a shit rule. I, I hate it. Yeah, and even even with that game, uh, Cleveland, even though Patrick is out, Cleveland Browns fans have nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, they took the Super Bowl champs, even though Patrick was out to the wire. I think the only problem with that game was even before that fourth and one, it shouldn't even have gotten to fourth and one. I think the third and 14 was the more important thing because they let Chad Henney scramble for 13 yards. You sack him in the backfield, and we're talking about potentially Cleveland driving down the field to win the game. And that fourth and one call doesn't even happen. Yeah, I forgot about that play where he scrambled to get there. Yeah, they that was, yep. Yeah, they just, you know, get a sack or, you know, force an incompletion instead of letting Chad Henney make that play. They're not in that situation. And, you know, we could be talking about a Browns Bills super um AFC championship game right now. Yeah. That I mean, yeah, that defense. And I think Cleveland going forward in the next draft, they they need to hit defensive picks hard. Yeah, they, that defense. Yeah, they know that they they know that they need the bolster up their defense because that back seven is just not cutting it it's not good not good and then with the bills game that was lamar jackson's first pick in the red zone in his young career i know with the defensive battle and things like that some people saying uh another disappointing way to go out for the ravens but the bills are not scrubs they were the second seed for a reason they were 13 and three and you have another young quarterback who keeps making significant strides each year. And now you have the Bills and the Chiefs. Uh, we still haven't even heard an announcement that Patrick Mahomes is going to play or not. He's going to play. He's going to Okay. I mean, they haven't said anything yet. I know he's going to play. There's no way they're going to keep him out that game. There's just no way. The NFL, the NFL gods who run this league are not going to let that happen. Patrick Holmes will be playing in that game. So even if he has a concussion, he will play. So with him playing, how does this one go? So their first game, they played, they played them week six. Mm -hmm. The chiefs won, the chiefs won that game 26 to 17. It was supposed to be a Thursday night game. COVID COVID pushed it back and it was pouring down rain in Buffalo that day. And I looked at the weather forecast, and it's supposed to rain in Kansas City on Sunday. So I think the first game that we watch is going to be very similar to the second game that we're, that we're going to watch. Kansas City ran the ball for over 200 yards. They have Clyde Edwards-Hilaire back. The Bills' offense that, that first game wasn't very good. They, can't run the, they, can't, they, they don't run the ball. They don't try to run the ball to running back. So I think that to win this game, they're going to have to – run the ball at Josh Allen. Josh Allen's going to have to be the, be the balance up for the offense instead of turn around and hand the ball off for Dinkin and Dunk or Dinkin and Duncan. They need to run, they need to run QB runs with Josh Allen. And then when they get the shot deep, hit it deep. But if weather conditions permit, I think it's going to be a shootout. And then if it's going to be a shootout, whose defense do you think is best suited to get that one turnover, that one third down stop, that one fourth down stop that they need. The Chiefs or the Bills? I would have said I would have said the Bills before I saw the Chiefs play last week, but Mm -hmm. those first two drives of the Browns game, it just felt like that they were holding they were holding back until this moment, until the until the playoffs to show the league what they're really made of. So 
I think that if it comes down to a shoot, I can just see Honey Badger just popping up out of nowhere and getting the interception. The numbers tell the numbers say the Bills defense is gonna is gonna fare better in a shootout, but my gut tells me that it's gonna be the Chiefs that get the put get the get the defense a turnover in a shootout that that can win the game. I think it's already kind of remarkable that uh, the Chiefs. This is the third straight AFC Championship game they're hosting. First time this ever happened in history. In the AFC, the other time was in the NFC from 2002 to 2004, and that was Andy Reid's Eagles. So it's kind of crazy that everyone knew he was a top coach, but now everyone has him as one of the greatest coaches because he has a Super Bowl. And for this Chiefs team to host their third straight AFC title game, and if they win, and right now people are it's friendly with their cap and all that. If they win, do this? Do you see an end to this? Because this would be third straight. I don't see it if they win. I don't see anyone beating them or having a better record next year. Like, it, are we really looking at another dynasty in the making potentially? Yeah, they can definitely win another one, but I think that it, I don't think they're going win the nurse. If they do make it to the Super Bowl, all right, we're just saying that they're going to win the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to win three straight. It hasn't happened since the Patriots did, and the AFC is just flourishing with young mm-hmm. quarterbacks right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, Deshaun Watson, even though we don't know if he's going to be on his team yet, we got Josh Allen, we got Lamar Jackson, Baker Mayfield, I mean, Ryan Tannehill, the Tennessee Titans. I just think the, the AFC is getting a lot better, and I just, don't see, I just don't see them continuing this complete dominance. If they're in the NFC now, then mm-hmm. I could see it. I, don't, I wouldn't be seeing it into it. But in the AFC, you know, the AFC is just getting way too competitive right now. Yeah, that's a big thing because you even did even talk about some of the team, like the ten and six uh, Miami Dolphins and the other team who was in the running, the Oakland Raiders. Remember, they were hot at the like. They're, you're right. There's so many teams in the AFC. I don't know if they'll be able to hold them off. But and then and then the emergence of Justin Herbert in the division. If yeah. they can, if they can get it going. That's going to be that's going to be someone in your division that's going to be fighting for fighting for division championships that you got to go against. Mm-hmm. I mean, he is he's in the, the arguably the worst division in the AFC, so that helps him a little bit. But I think I think that I think they're getting better. The AFC West has Denver, the Raiders, and the Chargers. Chargers. So the AFC is just too competitive to see this to see a complete Patriots like dynasty. Who you got in this one, man? Bills, Chiefs. Who you got? I gotta go. I gotta go. Kansas City. I just, I just seen this before. Now, if Patrick Home doesn't play, Buffalo's gonna Buff- win. But Buffalo might stomp them. If yeah, they'll Patrick- get blown out if Patrick Holmes don't play. But I just, I just can't bet against the Chiefs right now. I just, I just can't do it. After what I saw last week. You, you just, like I said already, right, but you just got that feeling that they were holding back all December. Then, oh, let's play all time. Let's 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 turn it up a notch, and they can just flip that switch. It seems like. So right now, um, if these picks hold true, we would have the State Farm Super Bowl with Green Bay and Kansas City, since both the QBs are State Farm commercial representatives. State State Farm Super Bowl. I mean, I mean that's going to be selling a lot of commercials. Yeah, we we can't we can't miss with if either team wins. I mean, I can do I can do a Tampa Bay Buffalo Super Bowl. I can do a Green Bay Buffalo Super Bowl. Like it really don't matter. I think both matchups are good. Yeah, I think each team has their own selling point to sell to the common to the casual fan. Tom Brady, if he goes to the Super Bowl, it's his 10th one. Everybody knows. Now they're going to see if he can win in both conferences. Aaron Rodgers, everyone knows him as well. Let's see if he can get a second one and chasing that GOAT status. Patrick Mahomes trying to be a back-to-back Super Bowl MVP, Super Bowl champ, trying to also already catch GOAT status. And then Josh Allen. A lot of casual fans still don't even know who the hell this guy is or this team is. So if he got to the Super Bowl and won, that would already elevate him to a point where it's like he's a Super Bowl champ and Buffalo would get more national televised games, and that's good for them and good for the casual fans to see who this guy is because the guy is great. Uh, you brought up the AFC. 
And I did hear something on the when I was driving for sports. And they talked about now the AFC North being the toughest division in football. What are you thinking about that? Because three teams came out of the playoffs and you still have Joe Burrow, who looked really good when he was healthy. What do you think about that competitiveness in the AFC, just the AFC North alone now? Yeah, the AFC North is definitely a it, it, it's always it's always been a tough nosed division. <laughs> like those teams just beat the hell out of each other every time they play. But yeah, I I'll have to agree it is the best division in football. I'm I'm a little concerned with the Steelers. The Steelers might bring yeah. that down because I don't know who the hell is about to play quarterback for them. I just don't yeah. like I don't know who's playing quarterback for them next year. I don't think you can trot Big Ben out there again. Not for no. the way he finished the season. So that that's the only thing keeping that division down. But you know, we were saying there in the year that MC West is the best division in football. And you know, Jared Goff brings that division down too. So <laughs> it don't matter. It's between yeah, it's, but, it's between those two divisions though. Yeah, it's the fact that they still they they still got a playoff win. Uh, Justin, how now there's only two games. So as a expert better, how do you do it in these championship games? Like how how do we have an Aki's pick of the week? Well, we only got one right now because I don't know which way I'm going betting wise for the Chiefs game. I did pick the Chiefs. I think they're going to win, but I do not know if they're going to cover because they haven't covered in over a month. They didn't cover last oh, wow. week either. So the only bet that I'm going to give out on the podcast is the one that I'm the confidence about, and that's the Green Bay Packers minus three and a half. If you can buy that down to three, definitely do that just to be safe. But I think that they're going to cover that three and a half. Okay. Well, Justin, anything else you want to hit on championship week? Because by this time next week, we're going to know who's in the Super Bowl. Yeah, there was one bit of news we didn't get to. Who did the who the Eagles hire for coach again? I forgot. We are the Carson Wentz show and anything. They hired Nick Suriani. He was the Indianapolis Colts offensive coordinator. And he has a connection with, obviously, Frank Wright, who had a connection with Carson Wentz. But I, I think that they reached on that one. So that is who they're hiring right now. Yeah, I am guess they're thinking that since he was around Frank Wright and Indy, he might have the secret sauce with Carson Wentz. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll wait and see. I know a lot of people who've been saying that like this this Philly job just isn't it. They have a quarterback controversy. Well, it's not really controversy. We all know Wentz is going to be the star. They're in cap hell. You're not going. You're not going to be in full control of the team because you got Howie Roseman running around telling everyone what the hell to do up in Philadelphia. So I don't think I don't think the big candidates even want a job like the Chiefs' offensive coordinator Eric and. Brian Dable, I know he's staying with the Bills as their OC. So, yeah, I, I think the top candidates honestly didn't want to go to Philadelphia. Wouldn't I? Wouldn't either. But we'll see. We'll see how how that goes. Any other news that we messed up on? Missed? Nah, we got all the we got all the talking points out the way. All right. Well, with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the NFL. L7C podcast championship week. By this time next week, we are going to know who is in the Super Bowl. And that is crazy to think about how the NFL season is almost over on time in COVID, which they knew we would get here. We uh, we all knew we were going to get here. Mm -hmm. We did, but you saw the national people. There's a lot of people like, there's no way they're going to finish. And we're literally a week away. And everyone knows. Are they still having they're still having that week break right after championship, that worthless Pro Bowl week, then Super Bowl? Yeah, that's always yep. that's always what we do is two week and we get two weeks off between conference championship and Super Bowl. So then even if something So Royal Rumble next week, that will be everyone's main focus. No football to worry about. You know, and even and even in a COVID thing, you have a whole week to test and be negative and stay healthy. So that really works out for them. But yeah, I mean that's that's all that we got. Justin, you have any last words for the fans? Bet with caution this week. It's a tricky <laughs> week. It's only two games to pick from. I would hate for you guys to lose your money picking the wrong side this week. So be careful. 
And with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. See you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.